hello guys in this video we're gonna see um, how to uh, use the Java login and also we will see on how to use the log4j API for logging in our Java program I'm going to show you in an entirely new project I'm just op opening the Eclipse right in front of you um, and it's asking my workspace and I just give the older workspace which I was using earlier so hope you are excited to learn how to use the log4j in just like five minutes and also the Java logging system so uh, this is just a project I was created just to play sound in Java file in compiler Java program uh, so let's get started I'm just creating a new project for creating a new project you can just click uh, command N for Mac and control N for uh, Windows applications and let's just select the Java project but if you want to do the you know like a log4j uh, program then I suggest to having a Maven project so go for Maven and just select the Maven project click next and create a simple project things so group ID let suppose it can be like a mm, crazy lazy and artifact IDB um, creations and uh, we are good to start a Maven project now so I'm just clicking on the finish over here creations so here to create a new Java file like a class we need a class to write a program and we are, we log those lines in the Java program so that is what we are trying to do let's suppose um, big number is a class name just finish see uh, here let's suppose we have a main method okay let's suppose we have a uh, simple Java program here and uh, which is uh, uh, like a addition of two numbers uh, let me just compile it for one time and I select a Java application and uh, I'll just return a I'll just display the output and you can see the output as 60 so 10 plus 10 plus 50 equal to 60 so let's suppose imagine we have a very large application uh, in the real-time scenario and uh, somewhere the logic is missing or you know uh, the flow is getting uh, uh, out of bound or uh, we are not getting a desired output or there is a bug or exception so to debug in the real time it would be really hard so what we do for the finding or uh, where the error occurred or uh, finding where to see the control or what values we are getting we use this logging framework so here uh, let me just uh, uh, pull the logger just type in here to use the logging java's default logging system just type logger and uh, some variable so when you mouse over here you will get an option called import logger by using this you will able to get import the logging java's logging system that is java.util.logging.logger by using this you can uh, initialize the logger logger dot get logger and we'll give the class name dot class dot get name and 
this is how we initialize the logger so once it's initialized in a class then we are good to use the logging anywhere in the same class so let's suppose we have an um, um, we need to find what the values of a and b are then we just need log dot so if you observe here we are not able to get this log because we have not defined this as a static or anything so let's guess uh, let's just define this as a public static so that it's uh, it has a object created and we can use it anywhere in the program so i'm just um, putting it as a warning and a message like hey um we are calling add function here uh, displaying the uh, what do you call the two numbers which we just initialized deck a and b and also we have another log displaying right after the call or in the function in the add function um, just like this and we are inside the add function and displaying the C value so let's just save the program and run it so here is the output so the first warning is hey we are calling the add here and we are able to display the objects a a's value 10 and B's value is 50 and also it entered into the add function here and uh, it went inside and it the control went into the function and and here it's uh, displaying hey we are inside the had here so this is the next log we see and displaying the c's value after that the control returns c and get back to the system dot and displays the output so this is how we simply use the logging by by using the java's util dot logging dot logger and it is as simple as this by using the log4j framework so let's see now on how to use the log4j framework so i suggest you all open the browser and go to the google.com and just type there like uh, mvn repository and in that this is a good place to find all the maven's uh, dependencies code so I'll just type in here like log4j and search and make sure you find Apache log4j here you know, this not core not the API they are the different things so over here uh, you will be able to see many versions you just type this first one and select this code over here till the dependency and just come back to your whole project and there you will see uh, pom.xml this is the speciality of the maven project we get the pom.xml and over here uh, just go into the pom.xml over here click over here pom.xml and here uh, before closing the project create a dependencies tag so create this tag and wrap it around and just save it as soon as you save you will be observing that it in the map independencies you will be seeing the log4j jar file downloaded automatically so this is a beauty of map and after this we are good because we got the jar file and now just close that uh, get back to your previous class and now we are deleting this import statement here and just import no don't import anything save it and here in the logger it's it shows an error because we just deleted the import statement and here you will find the log for js apache log for js logger just import this one now and you will be able to see the error gone but the logging levels are different in log for j as well as different in the java uh, util dot logging so here we have different kind of levels um, let's just set it to any kind of uh, it's fine I mean 
it you need so before doing that there will be an properties file used especially for the log 4 j so when we get into google and just type like log 4 j properties file and you'll get plenty of options and among this uh, <coughs> just select one I have already written that code in my one of my previous project so just get into the resources log for j property copy this file and place that in the resources over here so this is a log for j properties so here uh, this is a place where we configure the log for j properties so every this api comes so when the when we run this program uh, it will import the log for j and get it will search for the properties file in this xml i mean uh, from the xml from the prompt xml mainly and here it will check for the what kind of level we set its debug so let's just put this as debug here this is the level of logging one over here too and save this and run it again so look at this it gives a neat and clean logging this is how we log for using the log 4j and the important thing is just remember the levels will be set here and if it is error just type in error save it and here you can use the error this is the level of logging so there can be only one level permitted for each time so if you keep a logging lo error here as a level and if you set as debug it's not gonna work let's just test it so it see you will be on, only able to log the error message not the debug so they are the levels of uh, logging so this is much this is pretty much what i wanted to explain you all guys that logging is really simple and it's easy to use just a five minutes of work hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you again signing off jyoti kiran bye so guys i forgot to tell you that uh, there is one more important thing which i forgot to tell uh, so whenever you get an application run and the log is generated uh, you'll definitely find the logs in the console that is because we have uh, this here in the console this is because we have mentioned the console output in the log for j properties but in the real time scenario you will get a generated log files in this up in the server so you need to get to those files using some linux scripts or uh, in the if it is in a linux environment or if it is a windows or it depends like you need to get to the log files and then uh, g using the grep command in linux you will log all the files and in, i mean use the, using the name uh, so if i had a add as in name I just grep using add so that I will I will be able to find if that statement is executed in those log files. So where will this log files be generated? So here I have have a uh, line of code which says c hyphen hyphen log for j applications dot log, right? But I don't have a drive called c in my MacBook. So just but it will be generated a file it will be generating a file so if i search with this see uh, it has been generated if i open this file look over here i have got all the files generated at what time it shows in detail like year um, and time of uh, the 
log ran and the type of level it's set to and the class name and the exact log so this is how you find the logs in the log4j file files and also in the console and uh, I think this is what I would like to make it clear with you guys and uh, thank you have a good rest of your day